Hui Hui asked Xuan Yu what it could be, as he noted that even big consortiums didn't have that kind of cash on hand. Xuan Yu felt it was more about show than auction. Yi Yi told them to look at the screen as she hinted that it might be the most valuable item they'd seen in the last decade. As the screen lit up, a magnificent spear appeared. Yi Yi told them that the spear wasn't just any weapon, it also doubled as a staff and was once wielded by the mighty Silver Dragon King. She announced that the opening bid for this incredible divine artifact, which was ranked high on the Shrek divine artifact list, would start at 10 billion Federation coins. She also warned them that if no one placed a bid within a minute, the auction would be over. Someone in the crowd marveled at how it was indeed a divine artifact, but complained that nobody could get their hands on that much money in just one minute. Hui Hui said to Xuan Yu, 10 billion wasn't too bad for such a powerful artifact, and wondered aloud if Shrek had always intended to sell it. Xuan Yu admitted they didn't have a chance of affording it, but he couldn't help but think the silver dragon spear sounded a lot like Feng's white dragon spear. His eyes found Feng, who seemed lost in thought. The countdown began, and the clock hit zero with no bids coming through, and the auction quietly came to an end. As they stepped outside, they spotted Yu waiting for them. She confidently told Zhuan Yu to hurry up and work on his cultivation, because she wanted a proper fight where she could really go all out. Zhuan Yu forced a smile as he thought she had to be joking. After all, her soul power was leagues ahead of his. Without another word, she walked off, purposely bumping into Hui Hui as she passed. Hui Hui watched her go and felt worried about how she wasn't the class monitor anymore. He feared she might end up isolated by the rest of their classmates. Zhuan Yu tried to move things along and suggested they head back to cultivate, but Xu Xu told him they should report to the teacher first. Zhuan Yu offered them a bit of advice as he suggested that they should visit Sea God Lake later to absorb the lotus, as it was the perfect place for them due to its dense life energy. Mengkin complained in frustration as she pointed out that it cost three yellow insignias just for an hour of cultivation there, something they simply couldn't afford. Xu Xu nodded in agreement about how ridiculously expensive it was. Lei popped up with a smile and offered to let them use his insignias for now. Mengkin asked Xu Xu what she thought, and Xu Xu suggested they go back and talk to the teacher first. After the girls left, Hui Hui asked Xuan Yu if they were really going to use Lei's money. Lei grumbled that Sea God Lake was a money trap. Xuan Yu reminded Lei that he only offered to help to seem generous, and told him that if he truly liked Mengkin, he should be sincere. Feng leaned in closer to Hui Hui and whispered that it all made sense now. Lei's different behavior around Mengkin. Hui Hui couldn't resist teasing Lei about being chubby and said that he probably wasn't Mencken's type. Irritated by their teasing, Lei shouted back that there was nothing wrong with being chubby. He even boasted that he was chubby and adorable and that she would enjoy being cozy with him. Plus, he declared confidently, he'd protect her from any danger that came her way. As they all started to leave, Feng told Lei to wait until he could surpass her and then wished him a good night. Xuan Yu shouted if he really had an ice god lotus with twin flowers and wondered if it was a 10,000-year-old one. Tang Yue remarked that young people nowadays were really rich and said he would apply for it on Xuan Yu's behalf. Xuan Yu offered him a sincere thanks. Yue told him that it was limited to 30 yellow insignias until it was fully absorbed. Xuan Yu then mentioned that there was also a thousand-year-old life fruit on the auction block that had sold for 300 million coins. He asked if it was produced here too. Yue smiled and asked why Xuan Yu wanted to know and if he wanted one. Xuan Yu laughed and replied that he was too young to be thinking about extending his life. Yue reached into his pocket and pulled out the life fruit, showing it to Xuan Yu, who looked at it in amazement. Yue smiled and asked if it was the same one he had been talking about. Xuan Yu was shocked to realize his teacher also had life fruit. Then, Yue popped it into his mouth and ate it while Xuan Yu watched in disbelief. As Yue swallowed it, the realization of the 300 million coins hit Xuan Yu. He stared at his teacher in shock, surprised that he ate it and found it tasted delicious. Yue noticed his reaction and explained that each student in the life school received one life fruit every month, but they weren't allowed to sell it and could only eat it. He then asked if Xuan Yu had any more questions. Xuan Yu said that was all and told him he'd go back to cultivating. Yue smiled and said he looked forward to his next visit. As Xuan Yu left, Yue thought about his remark about once a month and wondered to himself that only students above the 90th rank got one life fruit every month. An old Shu's plan to gradually win Xuan Yu over was quite clever. The Silver Dragon Spear went back on auction after that day, but the starting price jumped to 100 billion coins. Lan Mengkin and Bei Shushu also decided to visit Sea God Lake to absorb the Ice God Lotus. With everything going on, their term was quickly coming to an end, packed with a hectic schedule of study and cultivation. Inside the forging room, Xuan Yu wished Ying Ming a good morning. Ying Ming sighed as he thought to himself that the broke guy was back again and he still hadn't spent a penny. Xuan Yu asked if they could buy rare metals from the exchange center at the Blacksmith Association. 
Ying Ming confirmed and wondered what was going on, curious if Xuan Yu had plans for the metal. Xuan Yu explained that he wanted to try something new and intended to buy one cubic meter of dark silver, which he would cut into 100 pieces. Ying Ming's eyes widened in disbelief at the realization of how much that would cost, and Xuan Yu must have some serious cash. He asked if Xuan Yu was really sure, since it would cost him at least three yellow insignias. Xuan Yu confidently said he was sure and thanked him. He then mentioned that he wanted to hear his thoughts on forging this time. It had been five months since Xuan Yu last worked with Dark Silver, and this session would reveal just how much progress he'd made over that time. Ying Ming watched Xuan Yu with a mix of curiosity and disbelief. The boy was so absorbed in his work, and Ying Ming reflected on how Xuan Yu had spent months learning on his own since he began forging. Despite being there for four or five months, Xuan Yu had never sought advice. Ying Ming wondered that Xuan Yu might be relying on books and considered it a waste of time. He figured action spoke louder than words and decided he'd give Xuan Yu a reminder later. When Xuan Yu finally opened his eyes and saw the calcination was done, he grabbed his hammer and got to work on the metal. Ying Ming's eyes widened as he watched Xuan Yu's movements, so smooth and precise. It was hard to believe he'd picked up these skills without any help. His astonishment grew when he recognized the technique Xuan Yu was using as the Tang Sects. The silver bar glowed with bright yellow energy as Xuan Yu struck it, and Ying Ming noticed it shrinking by a third, with its color intensifying. It hit Ying Ming like a bolt of lightning. Xuan Yu was using the swinging cloak technique, a legendary method known for its power in removing metal impurities. He was completely floored, as he wondered when Xuan Yu had learnt it, and if those twelve strikes had truly elevated the metal to new heights. As he watched Xuan Yu, he thought to himself that he had to be at least a second-tier forge master. He marveled at how he had managed to improve so much in just five months. He had considered giving him some guidance, but realized his skills were already impressive. He was really curious about how he achieved this. Xuan Yu focused and recalled his uncle's advice that forging was about creating life. He hammered the silver bar with all his might, and it began to float, glowing with a bright yellow light. Ying Ming, awestruck, exclaimed that Xuan Yu had nailed it as he tried to process the amazing sight before him. He saw that the silver bar was now much brighter, with a halo rising more than a foot high. Ying Ming praised Xuan Yu's hard work, as he was clearly impressed with his junior. Xuan Yu, however, showed off his work with a slightly disappointed look. He said it was only a foot high and seemed ruined. Ying Ming reassured him that it wasn't ruined at all, and it's only that Xuan Yu had completed a sublimation forging, which added spirit and essence to the metal. Xuan Yu mentioned that his uncle Lei had said a successful sublimation forging would have a beam ten feet high, and his was only one foot. Ying Ming asked about Uncle Lei and if he was Xuan Yu's teacher. Xuan Yu explained that he was more of a mentor and had taught him the art of forging. Ying Ming smiled as he realized that Xuan Yu's rapid learning was due to having a great teacher. He told Xuan Yu he had reached the level of a third-tier forge master, which was impressive. Xuan Yu thanked him for the guidance and wondered if the piece was worth anything. Ying Ming confirmed it was valuable and worth at least five white insignias. Xuan Yu's mind raced with excitement. If one piece was worth five white insignias, then 100 pieces would be worth 500 white insignias, over 30 yellow insignias. It meant tenfold profit, which was fantastic. Ying Ming asked if Xuan Yu planned to sell the forged silver piece, and Xuan Yu nodded. Ying Ming said he'd buy it, but asked if Xuan Yu could lower the price a bit. Xuan Yu agreed, and said he'd like to gift it to Ying Ming because his guidance had kept him on track. Ying Ming insisted he couldn't accept it as a gift from his junior and handed Xuan Yu four white insignias. He said it was still a great deal and a one-time offer. He then rushed off as he marveled at the piece and said he'd look into why it wasn't active. Xuan Yu thought to himself about how remarkable it was that Ying Ming could sense changes in the metal just by looking at it. After Ying Ming left, Xuan Yu tried forging the dark silver bars again. With his newfound experience, he felt more at ease with the process, though the long hours were exhausting. After his fourth attempt, he decided to call it a day and come back the next day, with the final exam coming up the day after. Just then, Ying Ming appeared again and hugged him with excitement over the perfection of the silver medal. He couldn't thank him enough.